UConn hasn't beaten Georgetown in four years. Three straight losses to the Hoyas, including last season when UConn made it to the Final Four and Georgetown didn't make the NCAA tournament. Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you here on CBSSports.com with a preview of this weekend's matchup. Saturday, as we bring in our CBS Sports' Clark Kellogg to uh, break this matchup down, we will every single Thursday break down uh, games for the weekend. And Clark, uh, Georgetown's got a, a great trio. Connecticut's got a great trio. We're right in the heart of Big East play. Which one do you think is more set for the tough task of Big East play? Well, Jason, I honestly feel both teams are in pretty good stead for the Big Ten, Big East rigors, rather. Um, you think about Jerome Dyson, um, Stanley Robinson, Kimball Walker. They're scoring about 50 points a game. Dyson is a guy who can make plays. Kimball Walker's speed allows him to make plays. Um, you look to the other side in Georgetown, uh, the backcourt of Freeman and Wright is explosive and, and very good. And Greg Monroe is a very talented big guy. Not only can he score, rebound, and block shots, but he's also an effective passer as an interior player. So those threesomes are, are good enough to keep both teams right in the thick of the Big East title chase. But, Clark, you and I were talking about this right before uh, we came on here. Do you think they need more from Greg Monroe? I would certainly like to see him be a little more assertive. I would love to see him average 12, 13 shot attempts per game and always stay in double digits in field goal attempts if he's not in foul trouble because he puts a lot of pressure on the defense because he can score, he can drive it, he can step away and shoot, and he's also a good passer. So more touches and more opportunities to, to go to the basket are important for him um, and that team to be its most successful. What about for UConn's backcourt? They had a tough game against Seton Hall, then all of a sudden Jerome Dyson started taking over. He had double-digit assists, Kemba Walker. Do you think Georgetown's defense, the way that they play, can handle the athleticism and the way that uh, Walker and Dyson can get into the lane? Well, one of the things you try to do against a UConn team is keep them out of transition, Jason. Make sure they play half-court basketball. You get back defensively, choke off the outlet pass, and try not to allow Dyson and Walker to get into the open court with a head of steam because that's when they're their best. If you make them play half-court, then it puts a little more pressure on the decision-making and the shot-making from the perimeter. But as good as those guards are for UConn, I think their most important player is Gavin Edwards. He has been terrific off the bench. He's a big mobile guy who can score and defend every front line position, runs the floor extremely well, and has really given them a nice punch off the bench at both ends. That kind of guy is really a guy that could be the difference in this matchup between Georgetown and UConn. You know, a big man liking a big man. Not a shocker there, right? <laughs> no, I tend to look, I tend to have a little bias towards those guys who operate Understood. in the pain area, Jason. Uh, that's understood. just the way it is sometimes if, when, you, when you've done that yourself. If, any, if anybody saw the Kentucky game, they could not argue with how well that Gavin Edwards played in that <laughs> ball game. All right, they're trying to break that three-game losing streak against Georgetown. It's on the road, though, so who wins it? I always tend to lead, lean towards the home team when it's a toss-up on paper, so um, I give a slight edge to the Hoyas. All right, we'll see how it all plays out Saturday from uh, Washington, D.C. Clark, thank you very much, sir. Talk to you soon, Special K. All right, Jason. All right, folks, for more on this game, keep it right here with CBSSports.com. For Clark Kellogg, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.